mandated church closures and restrict attendance are not just limited to states are just the states on the West Coast. In Bangor, Maine, Pastor Ken Graves was fed up with the restriction imposed on his church and decided to take legal action. He argued the governor's executive order banning all in-person worship, including parking lot services, was unconstitutional. Unfortunately, like we've seen in other cases across the, the country, a federal judge ruled against them. This summer, restrictions were partially lifted, and now the state is allowing services of 50 people or less, and the services that churches provide go beyond weekend worship. Pastor Graves appealed, arguing that there should be no limitations on attendance. His appeal was heard Wednesday, September 9th. Matt, as of tonight, Monday, September 14th, is there any update on that appeal? There's no update on that appeal yet, Tom, but irrespective of which way the court goes, this will be now a case that will be completely ready for a full review uh, once the ruling comes down either way before the United States Supreme Court. Uh, to understand, the Supreme Court has not ruled on the merits of any of these cases, despite what you may have read in the media. Uh, but two of our cases are ready to go, the one that we'll talk about later in Chicago, and this one right here with Pastor Ken Graves out of Maine. Uh, these could be the groundbreaking cases that set the precedent across the country for all churches so that this never happens again. Wow. Ken Graves, welcome to Praise. Oh, Your church has outreaches. Great. Your church has outreaches that operate throughout the week. What has this band done for those outreaches? Well, actually, we have just continued. We have uh, continued in defiance to do the things that we know our King has called us to do. The Great Commission did not seem appropriate to obey uh, an edict. There was not a law, not passed through the represent representatives of the people, but simply just uh, executive orders of governors who've assumed powers that are, we don't believe our Constitution grants them. And certainly they don't have the authority to overrule our king, who has commanded us with a great commission to make disciples of all nations. <laughs> so, Matt Staver... Why does a one-size-fits-all ban not seem to work? Well, Pastor Ken Gray's church, uh, Calvary Chapel of Bangor, is a clear example of that. He's been pastor there for 35 years. He's been there when the children were born, when they were married, and when they gave birth to their own children. It's the family, and everyone uh, knows that family. Part of that family is a passion on Pastor Ken's heart to help people like his uh, father, who was uh, an alcoholic and left him when he was young, to help people on substance abuse. And so on the church property site, there's two homes, one for women, one for men, 24 each, 48 in total. And that's a year-long program. These men and women, as part of this program, go through the entire Bible in one year, Genesis through Revelation. Wow. And what is part of this program is praise and worship, Bible study, fellowship, support, and it all takes place in the church. So when the governor issues the order, no worship, well, this substance abuse program takes place in the church. You can't just simply cut out the core that makes this program effective, and that is the gospel of Jesus Christ, the relationship with our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. You can't do that. If you did, these people would go back into either drugs or alcohol. Many of them who are not in some programs like this, who are not connected with places like uh, Pastor Ken's church in Maine, they have gone back into drug addiction and consumption because they've lost that support system. So in his case, what happened, and this is quite amazing, Tom, he continued to have the worship there for the 48 men and women in the church simulcasting uh, on the internet for the rest of the church family uh, that was at home. And some of those church family, they began to long for the fellowship and they were watching. They saw their brothers and sisters who were in the drug abuse, substance abuse program. And they called Pastor Ken and they said this, and this just breaks your heart. Uh, Pastor, I want to come to worship. Will the church doors be locked when I get there? And he said, no, we're not going to lock the door. Come on in. So these people began coming back to worship because they, lo they longed to worship with their brothers and sisters. And that's the kind of 
one size fits all just doesn't fit for all these churches across the country. You couldn't change this to a podcast and do the same thing. Yeah, Pastor Ken, what are the effects you're seeing in your community? Depression, hopelessness, etc. Talk to us a little. Well, our government has actually ordered our people to become poorer. And the, the result of that has multiplied every kind of social problem that we are normally in the business of dealing with. Suicide rate has already more than doubled. The uh, number of deaths from drug overdoses has far exceeded any of those deaths um, attributed to COVID. We maintain they've died with it, not from it. And <clears throat> add to that all of the, the, the marriage conflicts, a, a variety of, of sin oriented um, social problems for which Jesus Christ is, in fact, the cure. Pastor Ken, briefly, tell us, what would you say to Christians who are scared right now to take a stand? It's worth noting that a significant number of the pastors who have seen this for what it is and have stood up to challenge the government are Americans who immigrated from other countries that haven't had two and a half centuries of this kind of freedom. And they've recognized it for what it is. I really believe that fear is of the devil. And God has called us to boldness. And it is, it is the fear of man that is a snare. It's a, it's a terrible trap. And I really do believe that the word of God and the call of our king calls us to action. Thank you so much, Pastor Ken. I appreciate that. Secret police are staking out church gatherings.